Hey everyone, thanks for joining me. Welcome to the commercial drone comparison featuring the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Half the features, double the cost of that Phantom right there. And then we've got the M30T coming in right around $13,000 with more cameras on the front than your average house spider. Now, when we're comparing these drones, I've been getting a lot of questions recently from a lot of our enterprise clients coming in to drone use props program. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, propsflightschool.com. It's our enterprise training solution and platform. That said, the M30T is a phenomenal drone that has dual batteries, so you get battery redundancy. You've got four cameras up front, so you've got your uh, 48 megapixel zoom camera, you have your 12 megapixel wide camera, and then you have your thermal camera at 640p, and then you have your FPV camera, which is actually quite incredibly good at low light. On the Mavic 3 Enterprise, we do have that zoom camera as well. Although when we were comparing the zoom on the Mavic 3 Enterprise versus the zoom on the M30T, the clear winner was the M30T. We just had so much degradation of the image on this drone. I would say when it comes to doing any inspection work, cell tower inspections, utility inspections, infrastructure inspections, and certain other type of inspections, you will get a much superior product and deliverable with the M30T than you would with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. When it comes to the wide camera on the Mavic 3 Enterprise though, we've got that micro four thirds, I think it's a 20 or a 24 megapixel image. What's more important is not the amount of megapixels though on that camera, but rather the size of the sensor. Because when it comes to doing mapping missions, the quality or resolution of our maps comes down to a simple formula. That simple formula is what we call ground sampling distance, which essentially says that the quality of our map will be dependent upon three variables, the altitude in which that we fly, the size of the sensor, and then the focal length. This is why you can't use zoom cameras to do mapping because that focal length constantly changes. With that said, in comparing these two drones to do a similar mapping mission, the Mavic 3 does the mission in about half the time, the exact same flight mission, exact same ground sampling distance, exact same resolution. Mavic 3 Enterprise does it in literally half the time as the M30T and the resolution is, uh, well, since we flew at the same GSD, it's gonna be the same resolution. But I will say the overall map quality, density of points and whatnot was so much better on the Mavic 3 Enterprise than on the M30T. Now that said, I did mention that the M30T has dual batteries, so it is more expensive per flight, but you do have self-heating batteries. I would argue that if you're on a drone team or program, the M30T is a superior aircraft. It's easier to customize the controls for every single pilot and user. In addition, the BS30 battery charger from DJI really makes it easy to store these batteries at a safe operating voltage as to maintain the battery's health and increase battery endurance over time. So these batteries will last longer and you'll be able to fly more days out of the year with the M30T than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now, while the Mavic 3 Enterprise is about a third of the cost as the M30T, this is not really a direct comparison because typically we would be showing you the Mavic 3T for thermal. But in all honesty, here's why I would just never buy the, the thermal Mavic 3. It's not the quality of the camera that counts or the features. The M30T does have better thermal features. You know, paired with the uh, laser range finder, you really get a much more complete picture of what you're looking at. But when you compare these two remotes, the M30T remote versus the Mavic 3 Enterprise remote. This was also the smart remote for the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual Advance. Also the same remote for the M300. 
When you fly with this remote and the large screen, there are so many more buttons on this remote. It makes it so much physically easier to control, especially in cold weather. If you're wearing gloves, these buttons, you can feel them before you press them. You have a lot more functionality, a lot more ways to navigate to the exact same features than you do with this remote. It is really surprising that DJI used this remote on the Mavic 3 Enterprise and also on the M300 because honestly, it's it's just subpar. This remote is a little bit different than the M300 smart controller as you have more rubberized C1 and C2 button functionality, which is slightly different. But the limited number of buttons to switch between the multiple cameras, the limited functionality as a whole, honestly, the M30T, as far as controllability, takes the cake. As far as stability, how many days you can fly, M30T takes the cake again. As far as flight time is concerned, Mavic 3 Enterprise does fly a little bit longer than the M30T, but the M30T operates on more cold weather days, adverse weather conditions, windy days. Again, this is the most value for your money that you can buy if you can still buy DJI. I know a lot of you can't. So when it comes to mapping missions though, this is the clear winner as long as you can buy DJI. What if you can't buy DJI? What would be the equivalent to this Mavic 3 Enterprise? It would be the Parrot Anafi AI. And I actually much prefer the autonomous features, mapping features, interface, and so many other things of the Parrot Anafi than this drone. And they're comparable in price point. So, you know, a lot of people have been asking me, Paul, when are we gonna be able to map with the Mavic 3, the Mavic 3 Classic, or the Mavic 3 Cinna? Guess what, you're not. DJI made it really clear in a recent uh, blog post and forum post that DJI will not be supporting the SDK on the Mavic 3, which really sucks because the Mavic 3 has superior video capabilities than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. You can shoot in that 4K 60, you have a lot more frame rate uh, uh, control and a lot more different video modes that you can use on the Mavic 3 than you can the Mavic 3 Enterprise. In order to literally do everything that that Phantom 4 Pro can do, you would have to buy a Mavic 3, I guess you could get the classic, but the Mavic 3, let's just say the regular Mavic 3 plus the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So literally you would need both of these drones to do what just a Phantom could do. Now you know why the Phantom has gone up in value over 100% on Amazon because these two drones combined are about uh, seven to $8,000 depending on how many batteries you get, cases, accessories, etc. With all that to be said, when we compare the Mavic 3 Enterprise against the M30T, let me just break it down as simply as possible. If your primary goal is to conduct mapping missions, this is your drone. Large mapping missions that require geo-referencing, Wingtra, okay? Now, if your goal is inspections, thermal capability, insane zoom, you're in public safety, portability is big, your primary goal is not mapping. M30T, this drone will probably last a few more years than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. The Mavic 3 Enterprise batteries are just, it's just not the same bird. I will say, I do love flying the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Haven't had a chance to test the RTK receiver that goes on top. I'm still kind of like one of those old fashioned guys where there are certain cases where if I'm gonna use RTK, I'm still gonna have a ground control point anyway. I will say the Mavic 3 Enterprise is a lot quieter. Um, very, very, very quiet. The M30T, well, it definitely has a nice hum to it. It's, it's not quiet by any means. That being said, I believe the M30T is rated for more adverse weather conditions than the Mavic 3 Enterprise. But ladies and gentlemen, don't forget these spinning motors these are waterproof, okay? A brushless motor is literally inherently waterproof. The big issue that you have to worry about is water getting into your gimbal uh, motors and in any of these parts right here, which as we've been teaching at DroneU for 10 years now, can you believe that? 10 years now, if you really have to conduct a map in the rain, 
you fly in reverse and that's how you avoid getting water on the sensor or the gimbal as a whole. So again, if you're doing mapping, primarily mapping missions, Mavic 3 Enterprise. If you're doing inspections, I'm going to say uh, M30T. If you're doing a lot of videography, super high level videography, none of these drones are for you. I would just recommend the Inspire 2 because even with the Mavic 3, Cine Mavic 3 Classic and Mavic 3, the bird just flies like a dumpster fire. Um, it, it, it sucks to fly. Flying the Mavic 3 Enterprise and the Mavic 3 is like two completely different drones. And this goes to show that DJI rewards intelligence because this drone has attitude mode. The Mavic 3 doesn't. This drone, um, has a lot of programmable features like autonomous missions. It has an SDK, this drone doesn't. So DJI is clearly differentiating between the consumer pilot and the enterprise pilot. This was something that we warned at Drone U of in 2017 and other people in the industry were arguing with us that, oh, it's okay to differentiate between commercial and hobbyists. No, it's not. We all started from the same spot, which is a love of flight. For those who had the capability to turn it into a business, it's fantastic. But that segregation of pilots was only meant to drive division in the industry as a whole and inhibit our collective bargaining power for drone pilots. So if anyone tells you uh, who's in you know, government, on the DAC, whatever, that there's a clear differentiation between the subgroups of pilots, that is a load of crap. That is a strategy to take power away from drone pilots. Now that said, both of these drones are remote ID compatible. And what I really love on this remote, you can actually, uh, that one issue with remote ID of sharing a pilot's location, right? That judge from the DC district court was saying that, oh, these digital license plates are just like uh, license plates on cars. No, they're not, honey. You didn't read the law. Um, because on a license plate on a car, the driver has inherent privacy. If you cut me off, I can't figure out where you live unless I follow you, right? I can't look up your information in a database and figure out who you are. But with remote ID, anyone in the public can figure out who the pilot is and where they are, which for anyone flying serious drone missions, that's our problem because there are a lot of crazies out there that think that we're spying on them. And I hate to break it to those people, but you're vain because we do not care. Okay, we are out to get a job done. We do not care about seeing your 80 year old saggy boobies. Okay, we do not care. So that said, I know there are some nefarious pilots out there, but that said, one of the features I love with this drone, this Mavic 3 Enterprise does not have it, is you can limit the remote controls capacity to showcase location. So the remote ID information will show the distance from the drone to the remote, but it will not show a physical location of the remote. This is a programmable thing. So if you're like me and you want to comply with remote ID so that air traffic control can see where the drone is, but you don't want to comply with a Fourth Amendment violation of showcasing where the pilot's location is, guess what? DJI empowered us to uh, not get accosted because DJI knows if people, drone pilots are getting shot at, the number of drone pilots is going to go down. And honestly, there's a pilot shortage right now. There's not a shortage of low-hanging drone-based pilots. There's a shortage of highly capable, calm and consistent and reliable pilots who can fly in any environment in close proximity. Um, if that's you, I would definitely recommend becoming a Drone U member because we're about to launch something that's gonna completely disrupt the industry and, and help a lot of the clients who are our clients who are looking for great drone pilots. This is a long winded, long form comparison, Mavic 3 Enterprise versus the M30T. Look, the M30T is more stable, it's more agile. You have a lot more capability with it. It's just not the best mapping drone. This is by far the best mapping drone. If your main missions again are mapping and you want some zoom to check into spots and whatnot, this is a great drone. But if you have to get into the thermal game whatsoever, just go right to the M30T because your drone will last longer, 
your batteries will last longer, and it's a much more complete package. If you have questions for us, go to askdroneu.com. We did just launch the Don't Crash course on the M30T, free to DroneU members, also on the props program as well. And we are about to launch the Don't Crash course on this particular drone, which you're gonna wanna check out those courses because it's gonna answer questions like, what's the fastest way to create a double grid mapping mission? Because DJI's Pilot 2 really sucks for mapping missions. It's garbage, DJI, I'm sorry. So I can teach you the importance of the de-warping. I can teach you also how to make double grids by just changing course angle rather than making additional flight plans. If you wanna learn more, check out thedroneu.com, become a member. And also we're doing what no other drone school is doing. We are now including a coaching program for all of our students because we genuinely wanna see you succeed. This is not like a traditional college or university who is literally gonna take you into a cycle of debt to teach you what you could just learn here for a small dollar amount every month. We reward those who put out the effort. If that's you, you gotta become a DroneU member. My name is Paul, this is DroneU HQ.